Hey guys, welcome back to another video where we are working on the Astro Van. Today, we are replacing the front brakes with Amazon brakes and the back brakes with eBay brakes. And they are a direct replacement, so let's just hope that they fit the way that they should. So, there's one box there, sorry for the mess, and I have another box right there. One is the front brakes, one is the back brakes, and the front brakes are disc and the back is drum brakes. So I'm basically just gonna start with the front brakes. I'm gonna show you just one side. Then I'll just do the back brakes and then once again, show you just one side. They can be a little complicated. So, so hopefully this helps you out if you're doing it at home. Let's go. Obviously we moved the tire. Let's remove the caliber. This. For that, we need a 3 8 Allen. I got this from Amazon. And I'll try to link every tool I use in this video in the description down below. So check that out if you are curious. Move those balls. They're pretty snug. You may need to left tap the ball out. And just move the caliber and hang it up with a bungee cord. That's what I used. You can use what you want. And that disc brake is so bad. You should not hear the hard grooves. That's what you hear now. Yeah, that's not good. And these brakes are actually new. Here I'm decompressing the caliper with a C-clamp. Um, just keep tightening it and keep clamping it and it will Flatten out that cylinder. Oops. Look at me pressing in these little metal pieces on the sides of the calipers in. Make sure you press them in when you're doing it because it will hinder you when you try to put the caliper back on. Here are the new brake pads. Take off the backing plate off the old brake pad. You just do that. It's a tight fit. So we need to wedge it on with some needle nose pliers. and some more love taps. Knock it down to the center of the brake pad. Here's some copper anti-seize. I'm just gonna place it on all the contact points on the caliper. And just snap the bottom caliper in with some clean gloves. You can touch the brake pad. Mine are clean without grease and that just kind of snaps in in place as well. Now we need to remove this to get access to the nut holding the disc brake on. That is gross. Yes, it is, Chris. Go ahead and wipe it clean. There's a cotter pin right here. So let's remove that. Um, before I did this, I did the driver's side and the driver's side's cotter pin was a whole lot easier to remove compared to this one. So just grab your favorite pliers and strain out the cotter pin as much as you can and slowly remove it. As you can see, I use a whole bunch of different ways to remove it. Some love tapping, some squeezing, some more love tap, and some more squeezing. Finally it came out. We don't need that. All right, so just remove that bolt. It should be fairly easy. Make sure you keep this, it came from the front. It locks in place. Bang looks pretty good. But we're not going to use that, are we? And that's the new disc brake. Just showing you how nice it looks. Comes with two bearings. The larger one goes in back here. Be prepared. Have a lot of gloves. And a lot of gloves. Cause we about to get tacky. Red and tacky because it's for the bearings. Probably not the best way to do that, but it's fun. So go ahead and lubricate the inside of this brick and that shaft. And now we are going to lubricate the bearing. On the bearing, on behind the bearing, there's a little groove that you can insert the lubrication in or the bearing grease. So go ahead and just scrape it on your palm just like how I'm doing it here, all around. 
to ensure you get the grease all within the bearing itself and of course around it. And just put it in place. And do, go ahead and do the other bearing because we are all messy. Yeah. Oh, crazy hand. Yep. That is the seal. You go ahead and get a piece of block and hammer in nice and flat. Take your time doing that. So we have this lubricated now. And that is seated in nicely. There you go. Go ahead and wipe off the old hardware. Put in the locking washer. And the nut. Now you want to have this be able to spin freely without any movement. And I'm going to go ahead and tighten the bolt all the way as much as I can just to pack the grease in and that is not moving all that free. So I backed it up a little bit and that is where it should be. Here's some cotter pins, also linked in the description down below. Um, I chose this one, you can choose a bigger one. Make sure you put it through a, a hole that is not too tight but not too loose. Tacky. And yep, just, yep, do that. Just, just do that. Just, yep, okay, you're done. Yep, okay, go ahead and put the cover back on with the hammer. More love taps. Now, let's install the caliber. Put it in place. If you're having trouble, look at those things I mentioned before. Yep, put the pins through. Righty tighty, lefty loosey. And Torque them down to 38 foot pounds of torque if you're able to. If not, super snug. And this is my second time wiping off the caliper. So you make sure there's no grease on it and I'm just cleaning it again. I just didn't get on the camera. Sorry about that. Then you're done with that. And here are the eBay brakes, drum brakes. That's brake shoes. The springs, the wheel cylinder. Finally, the, the drum itself. Got and remove the tire again. Make sure it's in neutral and the e brake's not on. This, if it's not free flowing, then this will not come off. Now, I'm very lucky that came off as easy as it did. Usually, you need to get a hammer and hammer all around. Mine just came off. And that's a tornado. Yep. It was pretty close. But take photos of the drum brake, just so you have reference pictures to come back to. Spray it down the brake cleaner, just keep it clean. The wind. Yeah, I'm sure I'll be fine. I love you too. Yep, and that's how you move that. And to remove these guys, I basically just pushed it in and twisted the pin behind it. That's why it came out so easy. Yep. I started just taking the hardware off. Place the hardware down the same way that you're taking them off so you can remember when you put on the new hardware, how everything goes. Just another reference point. Let's get us pressed in and twisted the pin from behind and it came right off. Now I got the same adjustable pliers and you just kind of press it in using the metal and the, and the spring. Using the metal as leverage and pressing down the spring. And take off the e-brake, it'll just kind of pop off. Other cars are a little bit different. So these are the six contact points. We need to go ahead and clean them with some brake cleaner and a brush. Put them like this. 
And since we just did that, let's go ahead and replace that cylinder. Make sure it's the same part. Break loose the brake line. You gotta be quick because you're gonna make a mess. All right, now remove those bolts and slide the cylinder out. And it is as easy as it looks. And pop the new one in. Now go ahead and use that copper emphasis on all six contact points. That's where the brake shoes slide on all those contact points. So make sure it's nice and lubricated. All right, so I'm placing down the brake shoes, making sure that it looks the same as I, how I removed them all. Uh, take notice that the smaller brake shoes on the right side on this side of the van, longer brake shoes on the left side. I'm just kind of placing everything in order as I see, just so it'll be easier as I install it. Here's the self adjuster. Uh, go ahead and clean it with some brake cleaner. That's what I used. Uh, lubricated the threads. I, I took off the bottom piece and lubricated it and just screwed it back on. Yeah, lubricated. Yep. Now take off the top hat and lubricate that piece as well because it needs to be free flowing. And that is free flowing. Once again, be sure you're installing the brake shoes on the right location. Um, that's how you saw the e-brake. It goes behind the shoe itself. Then you install this guy into the hole. Obviously the hole. And bring that pin through. Press it in, twist. I, I found it easier to twist when you install it. And then let go. Then twist it again to seat it nicely. Then install that spring so it, the self-adjuster mechanism can work properly. All right, here's the smaller shoe. Yep, and the spring on this side goes to the right and just kind of wedge it in. If you took photos, you should know where it is. Sorry about this terrible camera angle, but it's pretty easy location. Now you can put the spring on first or you could install the self-adjuster. And be sure you install the self-adjuster the same way. Um, the shorter end for me on this side of the van was on the left side. So make sure you look back at your photos and make sure you're installing it the same direction. There you go. Yep, you gotta install big spring first. And I use this wrench trick that Chris Fix showed, which is pretty nifty. So go ahead and slide that spring over the wrench and over that piece of metal and just pry upwards. It's kind of sketchy, but you can do it. and finish installing the other side. Uh, this was kind of weird because it wasn't give, giving me enough room to loop around that pe uh, piece of metal that's sticking out. So it's kind of like just hanging on top of it. So I'm hammering it to gain some room between it all. And then I just set it in place just like that. So that looks good. I forgot to add this final spring on the passenger side. That's what you have been watching. But I did add it soon after, just not on the video by accident. And I like explaining my errors so y'all don't make the same mistake as I did. Um, so installing the smaller spring uh, is screwing in this case. And the same type of technique, it goes around 
that piece, but obviously on the other side. Um, this is the driver's side, so everything's just kind of backwards, but it's the same concept. And finally, place the drum brake. Uh, might take a second to just fit it on nicely, but there you go. It should spin kind of freely with some friction. Now, if it's not, you go to that self adjuster and, and loosen it. You spin it with your fingers and that will increase the circumference of the brakes, which will then allow them to have more friction on the. However, I did not have to do that because it sounded fine. All right, so now let's bleed the brakes. I'm gonna clean the reservoir, might as well. See, isn't that gross? Yes, it is. We need to clean that out. Please do. Got this from Amazon, and it's gonna work perfect to clean that out. Of course you did. Yep, just suck it on out and dispose of it correctly. Great fluid should not be that color. And this rubber tubing came with it. And just wipe it clean. And finally add the recommended brake fluid to your car. The van is dot three. Oh, make sure it's the appropriate fluid for your car. Yep. Let's go bleed the back brake. Now when you bleed the brakes, there's a certain sequence that you need to do. In the van's case, the, re the brake master cylinder and the reservoir is on the top left of the engine compartment. So the first wheel, or in this case, jump brake that you do, is the far back right, or the passenger rear brake jump. Then you go to the driver's side brake jump, then you come up to the passenger side disc brake, and finally you do the driver's side. And that's the sequence that you need to follow. If your brake reservoir is on the right side, do the wheel farthest away from the brake reservoir first, and work your way closer. And I'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick on how I bled the brakes. Um, here's the jump brakes. You just take off this nipple cap. Here's a tool that I use. It looks pretty cool. Place that rubber tubing that you got from that tool I showed you and, and have someone in the driver's seat pump the brakes. Basically, you want them to press on the brakes about 10 to 15 times, then hold it. Then you break loose this nipple and let the fluid fly out. Then you tighten it. Okay, uh, 10 times. And make sure they're holding as you loosen that brake nipple. And keep doing it until clean fluid comes out. That's Tara in the driver's seat. And just kept on going until you got some nice clean fluid with zero bubbles. And you gotta pump until there's no bubbles. I forgot to mention that, no bubbles. And finishing that, we are now here. Guys, we're done with the brakes. Drum brakes in the back, disc brakes in the front. But overall, it was pretty easy. It was time consuming for me only because I had to record for y'all, but it hopefully it was worth it. So this will help y'all out if you're doing this process. Um, be sure you keep that fluid topped off as you're bleeding your brakes. Make sure you, you bleed the brake farthest away from the reservoir first. If I missed something, tell me in the description down below. If I could have done something better, let me know as well. I'm always willing to improve. However, if you want, since we have a variety of cotter pins, put a slightly larger one in. Um, the ones I put in will work just fine, but just put larger ones in. Just, but if this helped you out, be sure to press that like button, subscribe to keep up to date with all my future content. I have all kinds of content on my channel. I'm working on this Astro van I'm converting to a sales camper van. And I also go through the issues and break down the reliability on certain cars on my channel as well. And I do that about one time a week. And so far it seems to be helping out a lot of people and I'm happy for that. And if you want to check them out, learn more about cars, go and check those out too. They're pretty quick. And thank you for tuning in, guys. This is Chris Automotivate. Always appreciate and respect one another. I'll see you next time.